Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Middleware Technologies. Today we will be looking at how to authenticate uh, with Kubernetes API server using a BRI token. Okay, so let's get started. I am working on Ubuntu 20.04 with Kubernetes cluster 1.23.1 installed. So I have uh, one master and one worker node uh, installed in my environment. Okay, so what is an API server? So as you know, like uh, whenever you install a Kubernetes server, you get a control plane, uh, like that is a master node with an API server. So API server is the one that is hosting the HTTP, HTTPS, API, REST API endpoints, uh, with which all the other components like external components or external users can access the cluster. So that is the main purpose of the API server. And the API server is the core component in the Kubernetes cluster through which all the API requests are routed for managing the cluster. So here in this article, we will see how we can use the uh, Kubernetes API, uh, how we can authenticate to the Kubernetes API server using bearer token uh, to access the cluster resources. Okay, so let us see a uh, high level architecture uh, diagram, uh, which I got it from the Kubernetes documentation. So as you can see, the end users are uh, like human user or end users and the service uh, uh, pods, basically the containers which are running within the pod within the cluster, they, if they need access to the cluster, uh, Kubernetes API server, other resources of the cluster, they need to request it, it via the Kubernetes API server. So this is the end users which will be accessing the Kubernetes cluster resources. And once the HTTP or HTTPS and uh, endpoint TLS connection is established with the API server, the request is routed through the three modules that are authentication module, authorization module, and admission control module. Okay. So authentication module, like uh, Kubernetes supports various types of authentication, like client certificates, passwords, bearer tokens, JWT tokens. So these are some of the two name. So once the request uh, gets authenticated with any of the one of the method uh, used by the authentication module, the request is transferred to the authorization module, wherein it validates the request if it has access to the required resources in the cluster or not. So authorization module is one uh, which supports various type of authorization like ABAC, RBAC or node authorization. So it, it's like a kind of uh, permissions which are granted to the cluster resources based on which uh, the authorization module uh, applies the uh, applies the uh, authorization module uh, which is currently in use and grants access to the resources. And the third one is the admission control. So basically it is a kind of policy which is applied to the applied to the clusters resources uh, based on which the request is granted access to that particular resources or not. Okay, so this is the high level architecture of how the request flows uh, from the API uh, in the API server uh, while it is getting authenticated or, and authorized. Okay, so let us proceed to the next step now. Okay, so now we will see uh, th this is the high level procedure that I have outlined uh, which we will follow to. To generate uh, uh, service account and get the authorization token uh, which we will be using for authenticating in the Kubernetes cluster. Okay, so as you can see, the first step is uh, creating a service account and then we will be retrieving a token from that service account. Like there is a secret attached to that service to uh, service account from which we will be able to retrieve the bearer token. And once we have the token, we will need to update the Kubernetes kubectl configuration like wherever the kubectl command line utility you are using on your server from there you can there we will be updating that token uh, 
uh, for that particular user or service account which we have generated and we will try to access the resources but before that we need to apply the roles and uh, and bind that roles to the uh, particular service account so that the required permissions are granted okay then we will be validating that access using a simple script uh, using the practical exercise So as a first step, uh, as I mentioned, like we need to create a service account. Okay, so service accounts are the ones that are used within the uh, containers or processes within the uh, Kubernetes cluster to access the API server resources. Okay, so in order to create a service account, the, be, uh, the very minimal command that uh, we can use is kubectl create service account and the name of the service account. Okay. So you can name any anything, but you just remember like what name you are given to your service account so that you can utilize it in the further steps. The next step is how to retrieve the bearer token from the service account. Okay, so whenever there is a service account in, uh, got created, it will be having a secret attached to it. So that secret name we need to retrieve from the service account and then we need to get the token out of that secret using the kubectl commands. Okay. So the commands that we will use are get service account, service account name and output in YAML file. So this will provide you the secret name which we want to utilize to get the bearer token. So once you have the secret name, so in my case, the secret name is highlighted in the green. You can use kubectl get secret, secret name minus output and JSON path. Output, uh, like we are converting the output into a JSON format from, uh, from which we are extracting the token field. And this needs to be converted, uh, decoded uh, from the base64 format using base64 minus T because it is actually encoded in base64 format. So let us proceed to our next step once we have the bearer token in hand. So once we have the bearer token, we need to update the kubectl configuration. Okay. So kubectl configuration contains three uh, main parts, the cluster part, the context part, the user part. Okay. The user part is where we need to update the credentials. In our case, like we have generated the bearer token for the service account. So we need to update the bearer token uh, for that user or service account into the kubectl uh, configuration once that user is added we need to create a context uh, basically a context which is mapping a user to a particular cluster so that he can access that cluster okay so so those are the two things we need to update in kubectl configuration so let us see the commands for them so as you can see, the first command is set credentials with which we are actually updating the kubectl configuration with the token for a particular user, that is bearer token auth in my case. Once you have added the user, the next thing is you need to create the new context. So we will be using kubectl context set context and the context name I am giving the same as service account name and the cluster name is kubernetes like this is the default cluster that you will be getting once you install the kubernetes cluster uh, maybe using the kubeadm okay uh, but you need to check uh, what is the default cluster name uh, which you are using within the, within the kubernetes cluster once you install and once we uh, we have provided the cluster uh, name we need to provide the user that is service account which we have created Okay, so this is the two-step process which which we need to follow to update the kubectl configuration with the user details, user credential details, and then we need to create the context for that user. Let us proceed to the next step once we have the kubectl configuration updated. So as I said, like once uh, a user has been authenticated, it goes to the authorization module for checking whether the user has required access to the resources or not. So that is controlled using the roles and role bindings. 
okay uh, you can use cl cluster rules or cluster rule binding that is up to you but in my case uh, like i'm here using the role and rule binding so here we will be creating a simple role with a particular set of actions on a particular set of resource then we will be applying that role or permissions to a particular user which we have created earlier okay so let us see the commands for the same okay so first command as you can see we are creating the role better token auth with verb that means actions that the role grants create get list update delete on resources pod okay so once we have this role created we need to go and create the role binding wherein we need to map that role basically the bearer token auth role with the service account which we have created earlier okay the role binding is first specific to namespace so we are applying the role binding binding in the default namespace as we have created the service account within that default namespace so once we have the role and role binding uh, created we need to apply uh, we need to check whether we are able to access the kubernetes resources using kubectl with the required context okay in our kubectl configuration we have created new context with the name bearer token auth so we need to switch to that bearer token auth context and try to access the pods in the default namespace let us see the command for the same okay so we will be using kubectl config use context and let context name to switch to that particular context and then we can try to list the pods within the default namespace if everything goes correctly you will be able to see the list of pods which are available in your default namespace with that particular context okay so let us see how we can achieve this using a practical exercise wherein i have tried to create a script uh, which will carry out all the steps like this is a basic bash script uh, which is not for production use but a simple script which we can try to enact all the steps which we have covered in this course okay so this is my uh, kubernetes cluster environment so i have uh, one master node and one worker node as i mentioned initially in my presentation and let me show you the script which i have prepared okay uh, i'll be updating the script in my blog also so you can take it from there and uh, i'll be referring that blog url in my youtube channel uh, description also so that will be helpful for you so let me go into my script and I try to explain you what exactly i'm trying to do over here so i'm just taking the service account name whatever service account you want to create then the first step create service account so these echo commands are going to just echo the command but the actual step is being run at the following uh, uh, following lines like the wherein there is no echo so it will create the service account then it will pause for me to uh, like enter so that i can proceed for the next step then it will create retrieve the bearer token for which we have two commands first we need to get the secret out of the service account and then that secret name we can utilize and get the token out of it okay so once we have the secret and token uh, uh, let us continue and proceed to update the kubectl configuration so this is the kubectl configuration wherein we will be updating the credentials and uh, creating a new context so once the kubectl configuration is updated we can create the role and role binding as i mentioned in my presentation and once we have the role and role binding created we can validate the access with the new context that is service account which we have created
okay so this is the last step wherein we are going to use that context and list the pods so this is very basic simple uh, bash script which we can utilize to carry out all the steps in one stretch so let me run this we need to pass the service account name which we want to create and apply the access to it so i will use a save bearer token test okay so as you can see the first step it has created service account then you can press enter to continue with the next step where it it will return the token and once we have the token we can apply the token uh, in the kubectl configuration by using set credentials kubectl config set credentials that uh, username and the token which we have captured it using this step okay so once we have the credentials uh, updated we can create a new context with the cluster and user so we have our Kubernetes uh, kubectl configuration uh, ready. So once we have the kubectl configuration ready, we can switch to that context. Context. So let us hit continue to uh, proceed to our next step. Okay. So here we are creating a role and role binding. So as you can see, the role and role binding has been created. Uh, these are the same things uh, which we have covered in our presentation. Let us try to hit continue and see the next step, which will be like applying, uh, like we will be uh, switching on to that context which we have created and try to list the parts. So right now you can see there are no resources or found in the default namespace because I do not have any parts created over there. Okay. So if you go and check the kubectl config get context we need we will be there on the new context but there are no pods uh, in this okay so if you go and check qc to get pods there are no pods so that is the output we are getting so you can try to create some pods and try to see if the output matches with the pods that you have created or the or whatever resources you have created in the default space okay so that is a practical exercise i wanted to show you and you can refer to the following documentation uh, from the kubernetes documentation which provides detailed information about the various types of authentication authorization modules that we can use and uh, with practical examples and uh, yeah so this is the authentication uh, service account token uh, documentation which I have preferred to create this uh, presentation. Okay. And uh, you can uh, connect with my website. Like uh, I, I usually try to update with uh, different type of uh, activities that I am carrying out in my day to day routine. And uh, here is my channel middleware technologies you can refer to it also with the same content so it's basically like the blog which i create i try to create the same content using the youtube channel so that if anybody is interested in youtube uh, like referring to the video they can uh, follow the youtube channel okay yeah that is it for this video thank you all thanks for watching this video and you guys have a great day